Hi, I'm Tanya Fissa, editor of The Gardener magazine, and welcome to The Gardener. Is this a familiar sight in your garden? Come on, be honest with me. I know you've got a patch that looks just like this. Unloved, plants growing or being planted in the wrong position. A pathway that looks like it really needs a bit of help. So what are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to throw in some really cool plants. We're going to fix up the pathway, add in a nice focal point and transform this area just like that into something beautiful. It might sound like it's going to take a huge amount of effort, but trust me, it's not. You just need a few simple steps, some good advice, and you two are going to have the garden that you will be wowed about just in about 30 minutes. Hey, Tanya, what's going on? Garth, you know, I really don't like this part of the garden. And um, I mean, look at it. The plants aren't coping because of the tree, the summer um, foliage in the tree, and they're really being planted in the wrong place. You can actually see they've got a bit of powdery mildew on them. Yes, yeah. And this is that, um, that blue salvia. Okay. You know, and they really need the full sun. Yeah. We've got this lovely fray linear behind us. This pathway that's looking really like it's going to nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I think it just needs a bit of, a bit of work, a bit that's of help. All. That's all um, it needs. So I've got some cool plants that I want to put inside here. Um, which will really cope much better in here. But I'm, I'm thinking we need something here. You know, we need like a focal point and it's not going to be me. I've got just the thing to do, Tanya. I think we should make a nice concrete chair. Well, that's pretty cool because then I could kind of sit in it here and look down into the valley and, you know, maybe have a glass of wine or something. Will it hold me, Garth? Oh, definitely will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So a concrete chair, just one on its own. Just one on its own. Okay, I like that. So first up, what we need to do is, we've got our garden. It's really looking a bit drab. We need to remove all the plants out of it, get rid of this pathway. It's actually giving me a headache, this pathway, just looking at it. Clean it all up. We've got to dig in loads and loads of compost, because remember, under trees, you're going to find poor soil, because the trees are going to be sucking up all the nutrients. And it's a common factor in most established gardens. New gardens where you don't have trees, well, you're kind of lucky, but you've probably been left with all the builder's rubble. So the bottom line is add loads of compost. So let's get this all out, Garth, okay. and uh, we can start our planning. Right. So folks, this might be a common sight in your garden too, as it is in the garden that I'm working in. Lots of mess and the mess is caused by different types of stone being used together now we've got a black chip here and then we've got these beautiful chips which are actually sandstone chips silly plastic that was used underneath instead of weed guard and this is exactly what happens do you see it starts breaking up as it gets older the sun starts breaking it up and then you end up with this mangled mess which is going to actually take you a lot of time to fix so what are the golden rules always use weed guard as your underlay for any pebbles that you're putting down. Number two, never mix your pebbles. If you are going to want to use different types or size of pebbles, rather use something as a dividing line, be it a piece of timber or a piece of metal as a strip that you can use to keep the two pieces apart. And then the other thing is, you might end up with pebbles looking like this, which is where they've ended up breaking through the silly bits that you used and now getting into the soil and then turning these awful colours, which is really not what you paid all that good money for. You want them to look gorgeous and the original colour that they were. So how are we going to fix this? Well, this is how it works. So we've got our bucket of stones. It's going to add some water to it. Till the pebbles are covered right to the top. Cool, that's just what I want. And then a bit of household jick or any bleaching product that you have, just make sure you're getting some in there and then just mix it around and you're going to leave this for a good few hours and that's going to turn your pebbles back to what they used to be. Okay folks, so what we've done here is we've turned this bed, turned it over really nicely and now all I'm doing is raking off to get all the remaining big bits of clods and large bits of soil out of here. And that's important in your preparation, else planting really does become a pain and very difficult. And you can see by the soil, 
that this is a very clay soil. And how do I know that? Well, looking at it like this, I can make a ball with it quite easily and it doesn't crumble. That means that it's got a high clay content. If, however, I took the soil and I couldn't form a ball with it, then you know it doesn't have a high clay content. Then you've got a sandy soil. Either way, to improve either of those soils, you need to add in loads of compost and good organic material. So that's my next job. I've got my levels. Let's get in loads of compost. Remember, here's a secret. You can never have enough compost. Okay folks, I'm preparing the area to put down the new pathway. Now, we're sticking the pathway in the same place because number one, the dogs love running in this part of the garden. And if dogs like running in a certain part of the garden, don't try and change it. No matter what you do, you put up sticks, you put up barriers, they will find a way to get through. That's how they work. So don't fight with it, just work with it. So instead of me changing it and creating some nice meandering pathway through this garden, it will be worth absolutely that much once all the dogs have got hold of this. So bottom line is, I'm sticking to what they enjoy. It's kind of like gardening around your family. Um, Garth is bringing along some river sand, which we're just going to use as the base. Thanks, Garth. Uh, just to make it a bit even, simply just use the back end of a spirit level, just to even it out a bit. Okay, and... Hey presto, we can put our first concrete sleeper in. Here we go, awesome goth. Nice one, let's turn them there. So, first sleeper in, good to go. Okay goth, this is the last one. Yes, Tanya. Good. Very nice. Much better than before. Oh yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Give me that guy. In he goes. Lovely stuff, nice and solid. We've got a brand new pathway and it was dead easy. Now let's get to planting and finishing up, neatening everything off. Okay. Okay folks, so the chair is in, the pathway's been done, we've dug in the compost and now we've got the real guys to put in and those are gorgeous plants. Remembering this is in a shaded area so we need to choose plants that are going to cope well with the shade. We've got some beautiful New Guinea impatiens. These are perennial, love growing in the tropical areas and certainly in areas where you normally get frost during the summer months you can grow these with great confidence. They're great patio plants in semi-shaded areas as well as in your garden. When winter arrives, you can dig them up, put them into pots and put them into areas where you aren't going to get the frost. This is a Plectranthus, it's called Mona Lavender, low growing guy, indigenous, beautiful, beautiful um, foliage and flowers. I mean, look at that, it's absolutely gorgeous. And then just to finish it off, we've got some fuchsias. Now this fuchsia is called Thalia. Fuchsias, sometimes people can grow them, or they can't grow them. Kind of like our grannies used to say, you could never grow that. But let me tell you, fuchsias have advanced hugely. If you're living on the coast, folks, don't even bother trying these guys because fuchsias just don't like the humidity. So anywhere inland or colder regions, these guys are just perfect. They love the semi-shade and this guy will probably get just under a meter in height with its beautiful, graceful flowers that just droop and hang in these little clusters and they really are gorgeous. What we're going to do is arrange these plants around here of course with our focal point being the chair and off we go. So Garth and I are going to get to planting these guys. Folks, for final touches, 
what we're going to do is just put down some gravel literally in between these sleepers that we've got here now this is an unwashed gravel if you can get hold of this at your local garden center or hardware store it's really good stuff um, also it's much cheaper yes it doesn't look quite nice now but you know what all you need to do is give it a light washing and you'll see it'll just come alive so don't stress out too much that it looks like this now we're just going to fill in between and I need to finish all of these sleepers and once we're done we've got one more little trick up our sleeve just to finish this garden off seems like my kids are enjoying this garden too So to get access to my beautiful concrete chair, I of course need a little pathway. We've put down some weed guard. All we've got to do now is just throw in the gravel, which of course is unwashed. So don't worry about how bad it looks now. <laughs> Lovely stuff. 